and you're joining us for the Youth News 24.0. Um, today, well, I am the interim producer uh, here, and today I am, you know, replacing the infamous Jordan A. Smith. Uh, here with me, I have Veronica Arnone. Hello. She's so. Um, we will be giving you some, just some stories we have as far as, you know, our recent topic that we just talked about in sexuality and some other recent events that have occurred. Um, so starting out, there was this church in Kansas. Um, I won't name the church because I don't know how that goes as far as publicity, but there's a church in Cam Kansas and they are very upset. There has been a nonprofit organization called Planning Peace that has moved in across the street. The big problem with that is they um, promote like uh, the acceptance of all like types of sexuality. They're very like gay pride. They have their flag on a 30 foot pole just waving in front of the building and that just upsets the people of the church. Yeah. Um, so they're, um, they're, uh, the church is very anti-gay and they don't appreciate the fact that the building is there. Um, like they're not causing any problems or anything. They promote, you know, anti-bullying. They've done things to help, uh, like promote like good health, and they've helped build or like orphanages in Haiti and India. And so it's not like they're harming the community. They're just they want to put a sense of themselves into the community. Um, what do you think about that? Um, I think it's an excellent point to think about both sides of this conversation. Obviously, we are having issues in the church community as people, you know, have traditional values are being challenged by today's standards. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to remember that no matter what happens, that we are supportive of the people of our community. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's an excellent decision for this um, what do you say, Profit for Peace or? Uh, it's a nonprofit organization called Planning Peace. Planning Peace. I think it's a phenomenal. It's um, a perfect name. <laughs> <laughs> Planning for Peace. I think it's a phenomenal opportunity for the community to come together and accept people of all different types of, you know, um, sexual orientation. We shouldn't judge people. And I understand there's a traditional background associated with um, the church, but I think it's also really important to remember that if they're out doing positive things for the community, then they should be positive for other people. You yeah, know, they're not going around kidnapping your kids, influencing them <laughs> to change their sexuality. So, like you know, even from my point of view, where I've like I come from like a church background, I'm like I don't I don't discriminate. I'm very like upset, like accepting. You know, that's your choice. That's your choice. It's like you can't really force someone to be the way you want them to be, and you can't just shun them because they aren't the way you want them to be. It's not like they're you know harming the community or anything. We we also have to remember that in this country we're fortunate enough to have freedom of religion, mm -hmm. and we are fortunate enough to have freedom of choice in a lot of ways. So if people want to go about and have a company helping others and helping the community, we need to be supportive of the community. We need to be supportive of people's actions, even if you don't agree with them, mm -hmm. which is very common. You know, you don't have to agree with everyone's actions or decisions in life because guess what? It's not your life. It's their life, and mm -hmm. we need to remember that and be supportive. That's true. Um, what I also thought was kind of funny was the um, church's, the, their founder, um, the founder of the church, uh, their daughter, uh, I'm not really sure how old she is, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure just judging by the statement she made that she's like a young child, you know, new upcoming generation, but not like too young. She kind of gets, what, understands what's going on. Mm -hmm. She just goes by the building and she'll wave and just, she loves the colors. That, that was the statement <laughs> was that she loved the colors of the building. So though the people in the building would just blow her kisses because, you know, that's, you know, very appreciative seeing as though they're getting so much, you know, hate and so much, you know, um, negativity from other church folks so I think that's more of like a good outlook that you know maybe you know there it's gonna start with her maybe that's you know where it's gonna actually change so I, I definitely yeah. think that this generation is more opening willing than it was 30 years ago definitely. and I also definitely think that um, there are always gonna be people that disagree with these things unfortunately you know I mean there, there's always gonna be people like this but um, I'm not condoning or promoting anything I'm just saying that if the child feels comfortable with these people, then they feel comfortable. Maybe that will be the start or the formation of a new culture and a new identity and a new acceptance. 
who knows within what will happen in 50 years. Maybe all the states will change to, mm -hmm. you know, accept gay, gay marriage yeah. or gay rights. So we, we don't know what's going to happen, but I definitely think it's going to be that generation, that child. Those memories, are those positive memories of the blowing kisses that will change our future, for sure. Yeah, I think that, you know, we definitely started something new as far as, you know, uh, the others, you know, us being accepting of it rather than, you know, generations before us not. Um, I think it's really cool. I've, the next story I have mm -hmm. is a student that was a high school senior named Skylar, mm -hmm. and he was going, he was actually um, transitioning from a female to a male. Um, his entire life he said that he felt that he wanted to be a male and he was blessed with the fact that his parents were willing and open. About 14 years old he started his transition mm -hmm. and this just became, you know, started with clothing choices and coming up with it. Um, coming up with this and this story really started with his identification and growth from his college essay. So, oh, that's cool. so this is a really cool thing. So he was trying to apply to the University of Chicago, which is a very difficult school, prestigious school. Mm -hmm. And unlike other seniors in his community, um, he, you know, not everyone's growing up in, um, they said, the suburbs or having excellent grades or having the best parents. And he was fortunate to have all these things. And, but, but what makes out. him different, what makes him different is this ability for him to be the special guy. And I think one of my favorite things that he said was um, that people have pre-formed ideas of what it is meant to have two X chromosomes. So mm -hmm. it's this idea that society has, you know, society has this preconcerned notion of what we are supposed to be, and he's trying to break these borders. So he, um, as far as like medically speaking, he was originally a girl, but yes. he's, you know, trying to undergo the, you know, procedures necessary to, you know, be a boy on the outside as much as he feels on the inside? Absolutely. So this is what happened. At 16 years old, he's one of the youngest kids ever. He underwent um, transgender surgery. So he, he went the full mile, which is unlike many other people of his generation. Yeah. He, went under, he underwent this. And um, unlike a, a lot of other children, too, he took um, testosterone at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of children are discouraged from this. Um, so he was, unlike other kids of his generation and un unlike many other child, um, children and teenagers, he was 14 when he began this process. So within two years... He's undergone um, this entire surgery. I think that's I think that's great, especially since his parents support it as well. Because mm -hmm. usually that's the main issue they have is with the support of your family and the support of your parents. Like usually oh. in school, you have kids your own age. They especially with the, we were talking about with this new generation upcoming, you have those kids have more of an understanding of what you're going through. They're more accepting of the way you want to live your life. Whereas though parents are more like, well, I don't want my child to be this way, and I'm gonna sculpt my child to the perfect way I want them to be. So I think that's great that they actually like support his decision because usually kids who are like who are transgender and want to undergo the surgery, they have to wait until they're 18 where they can give their own consent as to the fact that they want it because of the fact that their parents do not support it. So I think that I thought that was great. I think it's a little unusual, you know, in some households it's not very common, but yeah. um, I think it's phenomenal that he's doing something that makes him happy. And at the end, we should all be happy with what he does. It is not clear he has not had his genital reconstruction surgery for anyone out there listening, mm -hmm. um, but he has had um, other surgeries to help, you know, continuous transit, continuous transformation. Okay. Um, my next story I have for you, you know, we are, you know, passing by, you know, we've already passed the, the date of the, you know, infamous 420, uh, you know, the national, you know, pot smoking day, you know. <laughs> April so, 20th. <laughs> exactly. So um, it's a lot of things that people actually don't know about this day. Like everyone thinks, well, you know, we, it's just a national holiday and we'll smoke pot on this day because that's exactly what we do because it's 420 and, you know, you know, one of the names for, you know, weed is 420. So um, <laughs> what people don't know is that uh, 420 was started at um, San Rafael High School uh, by, I'm not really sure where that is, but um, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not really sure that where that is. Um, but um, they, uh, they currently, it was started by a dozen kids who, um, who referred to themselves as Waldos and, in 1971. And it started, it wasn't a day. Like, it started out as a time, like a time that they'd meet up to just get together and smoke 
a bunch of pot. Like, just, like, oh, it's 420, <laughs> let's meet such and such, and we'll, you know, just get high. So, um, <laughs> so they, um, that's what they did. They started that up, and the time, it just, it was just started out as a time. It was never a date. So, um, it wasn't, like, a real, like, national holiday. It just, you know, started out that way. And it's turned, like, to this day, like, to, uh, it's turned into something so great and so big that it's actual, an international thing. <laughs> like, all over the world, on 420, everyone's just getting high. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not really sure, you know, what to say about that one, because I actually, I didn't know it was, like, an international thing. I just thought, you know... You know, American kids just want a reason to get high. <laughs> and Unfortunately. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I was very surprised about that. But, yeah, it's an international thing. So, um, 420, we all know, is that, you know, international get high pot, or with pot day. So, what else makes it special? Um, you know, there actually, you know, were a bunch of myths and facts about 420. One of the myths was that uh, 420, that it's called that because it has 420 um, active chemicals in, that there are 420 active chemicals in marijuana, but that's actually false. There are only 315 active chemicals, and sometimes the number goes up and down depending on like which plant is used to make it. So that's not even close to the, <laughs> the you know, 420 needed. Um, another myth was that it was started because of Hitler's birthday, which I, I did get that. I wasn't, like, I didn't believe that one. But, you know, a lot of, most people, I guess a lot of people believe that. And it's true that is Hitler's birthday, but that wasn't the reason why it was started. It was started like 30 years, you know, after you know the whole war thing, you know, way <laughs> past when Hitler's you know long gone. So, um, but yeah, it 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 started as a time and not the date for his birthday. And um, another myth was that um, it was started at the date of the Columbine school shootings, which the term was already in use when it happened. So you know. That was, you know, that was maybe a one. memorable um, day for people. You know what I mean? Columbine was such prevalent. It was, you know, just like the Sandy Hook Elementary, but um, with teenagers, obviously. And this was, you know, almost a decade ago, uh, I believe over a decade ago now. So yeah. it was definitely a memorable uh, incident. And perhaps that is a reason why, you know, April 20th is, you know, remembered and has an association with. Um, you know, the importance of the day, but it is, in fact, have nothing to do with pot. Absolutely. So, it just, it just, just happens to happen on the same day. It just happens to magically fall on that same date. So, you know, it's just like, you know, there are a lot of, you know, myths and stuff, and the myth is not, is that there is another myth that it is National Pot Smokers Day. And, you know, that's just something that, like, it's not really, like, set in stone, like, that's a national day, a national holiday. It's just something that is just, like, went, like spread throughout teens globally. So it's just like a whole type of, you know, agreement on, well, you know, let's all get high that day. So, <laughs> you know, don't think that you're getting away with it and that your, you know, kids out there, you know, smoking pot, you can get away with it. Because trust me, your parents know if it was started in the 1970s, they definitely know about it. So <laughs> that's, you know, definitely and, what um, it is. One of the other th um, myths that are associated with today is that the police had something to do with it. You know, this yeah. 420, they call up and be like, we have a 420 on our line. They just say we have, they, just, they don't even say that. They just say we have, the, the code is possession of drugs. Like, that. that's a big myth about that one, about it being like code 420. So I thought that was really cool and kind of funny because the fact that you see so many cop shows and it's just like, oh man, they got pot, code 420, code 420. But, you know, it's not. Absolutely not made really up. <laughs> not really happened. Um, well, these are all our stories. You know, once again, I'm Shansony Cowens. This I'm is Veronica Arnone. And this is uh, Talk Back Routines. If, you know, just come and like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, you know, you know, give us some pics on Instagram, you know, just, you know, do the works. And, and this you know, is our week's Youth News. Yeah. Bye. Thanks.